uh, coach, if you could get us started just by uh, telling us what you and your coaching staff and the team have been able to accomplish uh, this week. Yeah, well, first of all, we got some much needed rest. We have some guys that were banged up. So um, guys, you know, got a chance to, to heal up a little bit. Um, we worked on, you know, obviously a lot of uh, technique and fundamentals. And then we were trying to also uh, uh, get some of our young guys that are primarily on scout team um, caught up. So we had a scout bowl the other day, and I thought that went really well. Some of the down the line guys got a chance to get after the scrimmage. And uh, I was very pleased with that because a lot of times, you know, those things are sloppy and ugly to watch. But uh, we have some talented young guys, and I think that's a testament to our coaches and, and the job they've done recruiting. Um, but, you know, also with that, we gave the guys a couple of days off so they could kind of just get away from – from football and and rest up a little bit. So uh, it's good to, for those guys to get some time away from out of the building and, and come back refreshed and got a little bit of recruiting done also. And can you talk about your uh, upcoming po opponent, Morgan State? I think they're much better than what their record uh, uh, shows. They've had a tough non-conference conference schedule like we like us um, and been in some closed dog fights. Uh, but, but they are a physical team. Uh, every time we played them, it's been a dog, you know, it's been very physical, a, f a physical football game. Uh, Coach Wilson up there does a great job. And, uh, you know, when he was at Bowie State, had, you know, won a bunch of championships, but very, very physical uh, football team. Uh, they did, have not decided on a quarterback as of yet. So we have to be prepared for three, maybe even four quarterbacks. But um, physical football team, we're going to have to obviously come bring our A game going on the road up there to Baltimore. Does that make it more of a challenge as a, a coach when you're preparing for a team that hasn't settled on a quarterback? You got to prepare for three or four. Definitely, because a lot of times guys have different skill sets where they're, you know, they have one guy that wants to run the ball a little bit more than the other guys. And um, then you try to figure out what these guys are good at. You know, as far as they're throwing the ball to the field, they're throwing to the boundary. Is it quick game or whatever the case may be? And it's a lot of times coordinators will have a package for each quarterback. So, uh, our coaches have to be, you know, locked in and, and make great in-game adjustments with whoever they put out there. Okay, we have a question from Caleb Veal. Go ahead, Caleb. Hey, Coach. Good to see you again. Um, you just mentioned previously how this week you guys were able to get the scout team a little bit more involved. At this point of the season, coming off of a bye, just what is the balance and what is the depth looking like for your team as in guys being able to, not just the ones being able to perform, but the twos and threes and fours down the line? We preach it all the time. You know, be prepared when your numbers name or number is called. Uh, last week, the first series against um, Elon, uh, Khalil Baker went down. And uh, Malcolm Reed came in and played lights out. And I don't even think anybody even noticed that, that KB uh, Baker was not in the game. So guys have to have to be prepared. Uh, we expect our twos to play at a standard when they go into the game, you know, a certain level. So, you know, guys must be must be ready. And that's one thing that I think we've improved all across the board is depth. We have a lot of twos uh, that really could be starters. So, you know, you, when, when Pee Wee uh, Davis went down against uh, Mississippi Valley, Walker, Walker Harris came in and threw five touchdowns. Guys are going to get banged up. That's part of football. But, you know, you have to have, you know, quality depth across the board. Our next question is from Chris Clark. Go ahead, Chris. Oh, Tyler, good to see you again there. Uh, you took my uh, quarterback question, who you're getting prepped for, so uh, <laughs> always nice to see you're prepared for these here. That's for sure. Let me ask you about the short week of preparation. You had the bye week last week. How much does that throw you, or would you rather get after it and get on the field and play? Because I know sometimes you uh, study long, you study wrong, as I've heard coaches say. Yeah, definitely. You you know, we needed a bye week to to kind of rest up a little bit. Uh, it was an opportunity for us to to – uh, self scout ourselves and see what tendencies we have and what other teams are are seeing with us. So uh, I really broke down our offense to try to get a good gauge of what other people are seeing with us uh, when they're preparing for our offense and um, our defense and the self scout also. So uh, just want to kind of see what we were putting on film for one. And um, we were rolling pretty good and in a good rhythm, uh, but you know we did need the, the bye week. And I love the focus that our guys came back with and the intensity they practiced with. A lot of times. You know, when you have a bye week, you know, guys aren't aren't quite as locked in and, and aren't, you know, practicing as hard. But I thought we had a great week of practice, practice and preparation. And um, the, our guys are extremely excited, you know, to play this weekend or Thursday night, excuse me. I'm going to say that Thursday night game there uh, got a lot of eyes on it. Uh, you know, it seems like you do well in the spotlight there. How does it, uh, how do your guys and how are you taking playing with everybody watching, especially on a Thursday night like that? Because that's pretty exclusive. 
Yeah, and that's, you know, that's why you, you know, the MEAC is a great conference. And, you know, every Thursday night, you're going to see, you know, MEAC matchup. So, you know, we're, we're obviously excited to be able to play on national television and put our brand out there um, and represent our university. But the, the guys are, are excited about it. You know, once the ball's kicked off, you don't even remember that you're on TV anymore. But the guys are excited, and, and I'm expecting us to pull on a show Thursday night. This is going to be the best we played this year. Our next question is from Byron Paris. Go ahead, Byron. I want to talk to you about uh, in-conference opponents. Um, how do they – how are the games different than – out of conference? Not too much. I mean, football is still football. The only thing is you have a little more familiar, familiarity within the conference because you play each other, you know, year after year. So you kind of have a feel about what this team likes to do in the conference and, and this team or South Carolina State or whomever, as opposed to when you play a New Hampshire or a Elon that you haven't played in a couple of years, you know, you really, uh, it's kind of new to you. So um, I, I guess just strictly as far as preparing um, for them, that's the only, I guess, difference. But uh, we don't really pay too much attention to that. You know, we we just lock in on and do what we do and try to do it well at a high level. Do you prepare different for in-conference? Do you, do you watch a little more film? Do you uh, switch anything up? Not at all. It doesn't matter if we're playing UCLA, Elon, or Morgan State. We're going to prepare the exact same way every week. Uh, we're going to practice the exact same every week. And um, nothing changes. Nothing changes. These guys understand uh, the routine that we do, and um, you know we don't. We'll never practice over two hours. If you, for me, if it takes you more than two hours to practice, you hustling backwards. So um, we get in and get out, get our work done, and uh, you know get out of here. But we we don't do anything different. Our next question is from JB Ricks. Go ahead, JB. I wanted you to expound on uh, your comment that you made to my esteemed colleague, Chris, over here, uh, when you said you know going into this game that this will be the best that you guys will play this season. Can can you elaborate on that, on on why you feel so confident that your team will will, will perform that well? Well, I think that we played really well as far as offensively, and I thought we played really well defensively at times, and I thought our kicking game has played really well at times. But I don't think we put it all together one time this year. So that's my challenge to the guys. You know, we had to put all three phases together. And uh, the only reason I say that is because I, how, how our guys prepared this week and how we practiced. This is the best week of practice we had all season. And uh, these guys are excited to play. And, and I've challenged them, let's play better this week than we did last week. And um, we'll see. And it has nothing to do with Morgan State. It's just all about us and, and our preparation for the game. How reassuring is that for you to for for your team to have their best practice, I guess, of, of the entire season during an off week or whatever, you know, especially with the success that you guys have been able to attain so far this season. They, you know, stay focused and they stay humbled and they still come out here and put out that amount of work for you on during their off week. How reassuring is that for you for what you guys can achieve? This year? Well, you know, we haven't been in, in I don't they don't act like they've been reading the clippings and got the big hit. You know, they accept coach and they have a coach me coach attitude. Uh, you know, whether we win or lose, there's always corrections that can be made. And these guys have a great attitude and, and they're hungry. So that's why, you know, I feel so confident about that. You know, they're, they're accepting coaching. My coaches do a great job. I can't say enough about them. Um, and, and, you know, we, we're not just out there going through the motions and, yeah, we're five and one and, you know, just getting through practice. They go out here with a mindset to attack practice and get better. We're not just going here trying to survive. So when you see guys preparing like this and, and are, that are locked in and focused like this, uh, that are trying to get better, you know, you got a chance to have something really special. You, you've reached this portion of the schedule where you have back-to-back -back games on Thursday nights, National Spotlight, ESPNU, and all that. Um, but when it comes to the actual schedule for you and the flow of the season, how does it does it switch it up? Does it throw in any quirks or whatever, having back-to-back -back games on Thursdays instead of the normal weekend? Today's like a, a Wednesday for us around here preparation-wise. So uh, trying to get my, my days of the week, staying on task with that. But um, no, it did nothing changes. You know, we step, try to win the moment, stay, stay in the moment. Uh, we were worried about Morgan State this week. Nobody's even talked about, thought about uh, anything with South Carolina State. So um, it doesn't matter Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, just put the ball down and let's play some football. All right. Our next question is from Lawrence Davis. Go ahead, Lawrence. Uh, I see a lot of your uh, players really um, taking the time to volunteer and spend a lot of time in the community. 
um, just kind of talk about um, the importance of, you know, playing a, a importance in the community around North Carolina Central in Durham. And is that something that you stress, uh, you know, to be more of a, you know, part of your community or, um, you know, to be a good person off the field as well? Definitely. And I think that's part of our culture. That's part of character. Obviously, that's the model of the university is truth and service. So um, uh, Coach Kevin Maurice, our running back coach, he, he oversees and leads our all our community engagements. Um, but we try to do as much as we can in the community and give back. Uh, last year, last semester, we did 3,600 hours worth of community service hours. So, you know, my our guys understand it's, it's their role to serve their larger purpose. And, you know, you try to go out here in the community and make a difference in somebody's life, whether it's an adult or, or a child. Uh, but it's, it's, it's our responsibility to, to uh, try to uplift the Durham, the Durham city as much as we can. And it's really good to see our guys doing that, and they enjoy doing it. All right, our next question is from Kate Rogerson. Go ahead, Kate. In that Elon game, um, you guys went down early and you had to face adversity and climb back. Having a test like that before beginning the MEAC, what does that do for you all as the season kind of reset? Because I know it's zero and zero, no rings or one at this point in the year. Right, and that's one thing that we've got to, I want to see us improve this week. We cannot get off to a slow start and be down 10 nothing like we did to Elon or down 21 points to uh, Campbell. So that's the challenge of the week. Let's, let's start fast. Uh, defensively, we've got to get some stops early. Offensively, we need to get in the rhythm. And um, let's work to put all three phases, like we said, offense, defense, and the kicking game together. All right. Uh, next question from Chris Clark. Go ahead, Chris. I did have one uh, uh, football adjacent question there. Uh, putting together something on the uh, managers that you have. I did not realize how much work they did before and after the game. Uh, could I just get you to talk a little bit about how much they put into it and how much they make that experience for you all with uh, taking care of all the jerseys, equipment, and getting things ready for you all to practice at home and on the road too, Coach? Yes, Adrian Powell. We call him motion around here. Um, he's my head equipment manager, and then we have Mr. Ruffin that, that helps out uh, with this. But we talk constantly that everybody in the program counts. Everybody is just as important as I am, um, whether it's the student managers, whether it's our student trainers, uh, our video, our SID. Everybody is just as important as I am because uh, without them, you know, we can't practice. Uh, if, if we don't have the sports medicine, our trainers, getting these guys back, um, obviously that's going to reflect, you know, on the whole program. So I, I'm so appreciative appreciative of those guys and girl, ladies. Um, I go out and speak to all of them every day and thank them. I just bought dinner for the uh, the whole auxiliary staff. So, uh, you know, show my appreciation. So uh, they work behind the scenes and they're here late at night and washing clothes and folding stuff and fixing helmets and everything else. So uh, I'm definitely appreciative of my, my, my support staff. All right, we have another question from Kate Rogerson. Go ahead, Kate. Coach, I know you mentioned that the players had an opportunity to get away from the facility, and I know you were busy, but curious if you were able to put football on pause or do anything fun or interesting in the bye week. I did have a chance to watch uh, fencing. They had a group that was doing fencing uh, in our building, and that was my first time. I'd never seen that. You know, I like to get into these other sports. Like, my, my Olympic deal is curling. I really like curling. But uh, fencing was different. I learned a whole lot about it. And um, there's a spot in Durham that, that forged fencing that, that I'm going to take the team to. Safety Manny Smith is, is coming up next. Uh, can you talk about Manny and, and what he's meant to the program? Grandpa. Manny's the old man of the group around here. I think it's only two people, he and uh, Romeo Stansel, that were here in 19 uh, when I first got here. Great guy. Uh, we, you know, obviously back in and that's where my heart is. And uh, I held those guys to a high standard when I got here. And I know sometimes they kind of looked at me like I was halfway crazy. You know, I had a thing when I got here, I was calling guys by their jersey number. So I called Manny 2-3 and he didn't think I knew his name. And, you know, he'd always get mad at me, cut his eye at me. But uh, great football player, great young man. Uh, obviously, he's already graduated, um, is a vocal leader in the room and, and has a great knowledge of the game. You know, I can't say enough about him. And, you know, he's all about, he understands the culture that we had here and, and what we were trying to build. And, you know, he hung in here with me through the tough times and, and we built this thing. You know, Manny, myself and Rome, I think, and TC, we built this thing. And it's good to see him reaping the benefits now uh, from going where we were, from where we were in 2019 
to winning a championship, national championship last year, and then having some success this year. So uh, he's another one of those like, guys I say, you know, he's a great football player, but great young man. Uh, that's what our program is all about. And we're built on with good people in our program. Manny, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you? Doing well. Thank you. Um, if you could uh, talk about, one, how you feel the season has gone so far for you and for the team. And then uh, what did you experience during the open week? Uh, so far, I feel like we're making some big strides. Um, referring back to last year, you know, every day we're coming out improving on the little things as far as like defensive wise, even if that's like tackling, communicating, just the small things and just getting better day by day. All right, we'll open it up to the media for questions. Our first one is from Chris Clark. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, Manny, thank you for uh, hanging out here. I wanted to ask you about preparing for uh, Morgan State when you don't quite know who's going to be under center. Is this a case of studying a little bit about uh, a group of guys or just making sure that you're solid on what your uh, setup is for defense? Uh, since they got uh, several quarterbacks, you know, we try to focus on all of them, all of them that play. You know, um, making sure we know their tendencies and everything of that nature so there won't be any, you know, surprises. And last year, what you guys hung, what, 59 on them at your place? Uh, uh, how do you how do you not look past that? I mean, you know, they're getting better, obviously, and I'm pretty sure they got this date circled to get a little revenge. But how do you uh, how do you stay frosty, I guess, for lack of a better word? Well, yeah, you know, we try to keep the pass in the past and just keep moving forward and treat every game like, it's the last, so the most important game is the next one. All right, next question is from Lawrence Davis. Go ahead, Lawrence. Uh, talk a little bit about during the Elon game when, when KB went down. What was the talk amongst the the, the secondary, um, you know, during that time? And how'd you guys, how were you guys able to kind of keep moving without any issues? Oh, yeah, when Khalil went down, you know, we, we got, we, we have some pretty good depth in the back end. You know, I believe that, like we have, you know, it's 11 starters on defense, but as a defense, I feel like we have at least 18 starters, so to say, like our backups can easily be starters. So when Malcolm Reed came in and stepped in, there was like no drop off. And, you know, Khalil Baker, he's a he's a good guy. He's making sure Malcolm is like making the right reads every time he comes to the sideline, just helping him out. Yeah, I know you guys have been through a lot of tough battles, you know, during this non-conference play. Now heading into me at the time, how confident are you are uh, you with your defense, knowing that you guys can kind of handle anything that's thrown at you from, you know, during conference play? Well, you know, we're very confident. Thanks to our coaching staff for putting us in the right position every time, you know, and just helping us out, building our game more, and just coming out of practice, competing every day, and that also builds confidence. Our next question is from Kate Rogerson. Go ahead, Kate. So this is your last MEAC opener. Um, kind of just what are your thoughts going into this as not your last first game, but again, your last first uh, MEAC opponent for the first time? Well, yeah, it's it's very surreal, you know. You know, I try not to get too emotional about it. You know, that's my last first conference game. You know, coming into it, I'm trying to leave no regrets on the field and just give it my all. Before you came on, coach referred to you as grandpa. Um, is that something that you've embraced, that title on the team? You know, some of the guys uh, call me grandpa too. I, I try not to fall into it. I really don't like that nickname because it made me feel old. But looking into it, I, I have been here for a little minute. <laughs> All right, our next question is from Byron Paris. Go ahead, Byron. How do you try to put uh, the mindset of leadership into um, these young guys, um, into these freshmen and sophomores? Well, you know, they don't, it's it's not that hard dealing with the, the teammates that we have around. And, you know, we have several other leaders around that makes leadership easier, so to say. So it's like just, just keeping the positivity flowing around. Next question from Caleb Beal. Go ahead, Caleb. Secondary as a whole, where, where do you rank this group and where what the imprint that they've had on this team and how they've improved from week one till now? Well, you know, every week, we're gradually improving, whether it's the small things. The, the biggest thing we try to focus on is communication. Cause you know, the back end, the safety has got to be the generals on the back end, getting the calls in and things of that nature. Yeah, I, I feel like every week we're just gradually growing. And he coach told us um, going off that the prep has been so crucial because there's multiple options at quarterback. 
He also told us that this has been the best week of practice and prep that he's seen this season. Um, do you feel that way? And maybe what have you seen that's made it such a strong week? Coming out the bye week, you know, we're just ready to play ball and make plays. And Dylan, that's, this is the um, start of conference. So we got to turn it up a couple notches. All right, looks as like uh, those are all the questions from the media. I always like to ask uh, Manny, how did you end up uh, here at NCCU? And, and talk about your overall experience here. The atmosphere, you know, it's very much family oriented around here. And I just love the atmosphere of the games and all the fans and the whole community.